Hi, I'm Dr. Erin Claybrow. I'm a neuroscientist, and I'm going to teach you how to build a Play-Doh brain today. So we're going to start with the spinal cord, which is how the brain gets messages to and from the rest of the body. And then the medulla is the most lower down part of the brain with breathing and heartbeat regulation centers in it. Next, we have the pons, which has a lot of cranial nerve nuclei in it and also some sleep. <laughs> then we've got the midbrain, which has on the top the superior and the bottom the inferior colliculi that do vision and audition, respectively. The thalamus comes on top of that. The thalamus is a relay station for motor information going out and sensory information coming in. It sends it to where it needs to go. Next, we have the cerebellum, which is going on the back of the brain. The cerebellum has to do with movement and with reflexes and posture. Next, we have the hypothalamus, which has to do with basic body functions, thirst, hunger, and hormones there through the pituitary gland. We have the amygdala. The amygdala has to do with emotional responses, particularly fear. Then we have the hippocampus, which has to do with memory. The striatum is the caudate and the putamen and has to do with motor systems or movement. Then comes the limbic lobe, which is also known as the cingulate gyrus. It's an internal structure um, in the cerebrum or the cerebral cortex. Then comes the frontal lobe, one on either side. The frontal lobe is responsible for personality, attention, and it also in the back of it has the motor cortex for movement. The parietal lobe is just behind it. The parietal lobe has a sensory cortex in it, and it also helps us know where we are in space. The occipital lobe is responsible for processing of visual information, one on either side. And then finally, we have the parietal lobe, which is responsible for processing auditory information and also helpful for speech production. Thank you for following along. I would like for you now to take a look at your masterpiece. You have now done the structure of a brain. When we're thinking about structure function relationships, it makes sense that anything that gets damaged is going to have a specific impact on function. So if you damage any part of the brain that you just made, you're going to impact function and that will look like a behavior or a, a symptom. So I'd like you to take a toothpick or some other kind of chopstick um, needle and I'd like you to poke a hole kind of through your brain. And then after you've done that, I'd like you to really look at your brain and I'd like you to see what the structures that are impacted are. What are their typical functions and what things might you see in a person who has damage to one of those structures? Make a list of the symptoms that somebody with damage or a head injury to those particular regions might experience. Now we're going to take our brain apart, and as you go back through, I'd like you to look at these groupings. They're either grouped by functionality or by when the brain area arose during development. Okay, so first we're going to take off our cerebral cortex, all four of those, plus the fifth limbic lobe there. Then we're going to take off the striatum and the amygdala, the hippocampus, the pituitary gland and the attached hypothalamus. We're gonna remove everything from the other side as well because all these structures are bilateral. Next, we're gonna take off the thalamus, which has a left and a right thalamus. And then we're gonna take off the cerebellum, our midbrain, our pons, our medulla, and we're left with a spinal cord. Thanks for watching.